Okay, Vito, my liver's starting to finally heal. We're back from Homebrew Con. What did you think? Oh my God, amazing. Uh, love, it. you know, it's been two years since we, we've been to Homebrew Con. Uh, just so great to get back and talk to homebrewers. I love talking beer, you guys love talking beer. I love talking beer with you. Just so reinvigorating and, and just gets me stoked to make some beer. It was awesome to meet some of you guys there. I actually got asked to do selfies. So if you took one of those selfies, Post it back to us, I'd love to see it. But we had a great time, I mean, it was really cool. I think one of the things that helps is doing this show. And it really, I've been invigorated with homebrewing again. And the last show I went to was a couple years ago and I remember kind of saying like, I don't know, maybe I could open my spot up to someone else in the company who might have more energy to bring. But this, this made me like, not only love the fact that we're back to homebrewing, but makes me want to do more. Yeah, super fun. Uh, one of my top highlights, and we'll talk about all the different things Club Nines, but I got to judge this year uh, and actually judge with Gordon Strong, um, you know, three time Nikazi winner, one of the, uh, you know, the triple grandmaster judges. So that was really fun. Uh, Can I call him a nerd because he sent me a picture with Gordon while judging? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm a nerd. Yeah, uh, it was fun. Uh, so that was probably my highlight of, of the show. And then just talking to all the homebrewers. Yeah. The, Doing the display all week long was great, but club night. I mean, how about that club night? And, and we went live, we had our technical glitches and I'm not gonna let Dave the cameraman uh, be the cameraman anymore. He drinks a little bit and he's a little bit fast with the movements. But yeah, some people have uh, shakes after drinking. He had it well. Or, yeah. And moreover than anything though, those of you who've never been to one, you kind of got a little glimpse. It's hard to capture the feelings and the awesomeness of it. Um, but you know, there's a lot going on. There's the people with their booths. They all have a theme. I mean, Caddyshack was my favorite. Theme. Yeah, that was really cool. And, and you know, the, the, the Wild West one was cool, but the, the Caddyshack was great. And, and beers were tremendous this year. Uh, we had uh, Janice Brown. That was, you know, one of my favorites on cast. There on cast. I went back to there three or four times. That was amazing. But just overall, like those mountain brewers from North Carolina, mm -hmm. the, they just, the quality of beer was phenomenal. Where in years past, there has been some great beer and then some beer that, you know, we did have one beer though we should talk about. And it was a guy who uh, was hanging out at the booth and said, hey, I gotta have you guys try oh, this beer. Oh, I know where you're going now, yeah. And well, uh, he's like, I don't have a bottle opener and I always use my wedding ring and I open it and the second I open it, it's just gushing into my hands and I'm just put it down on the table and walked away and I'm like, I'm not drinking that. The fact that it was a gusher even wasn't what was disgusting about it. No, Let's talk about the beer style. But man. hold on, yeah. I smelt my hands. Yeah. Because there's no wash basin to, I'm like, I need to go sanitize these, but I smelt them I'm like, what? That is not a smell I've ever had from a beer before. Yeah. So should we tell them what it was? Absolutely. It was a hot dog beer. Um, yeah. And it had mustard, pickles, hot dog water. It was, it was, there. It was literally hot dog water on my hands. You know that smell? He nailed it. Yeah, he, yeah, he nailed it, but I would never want to drink it. <laughs> Yeah, it was it was uh, it was pretty bad. Yeah, so the, you'll run into things like that too. You know, I mean, clam chowder beer. Remember at San Diego, uh, that was you know one. I mean, just these kind of fun, fun things that you run into. But it's cool because these people can make this and uh, with fun, where you can't go to a brewery who's going to get creative and do something because they're making you know, thousands of gallons at a time, which wouldn't be economically feasible. Yeah. But no. to make a little two gallon, five gallon, whatever size batch of something that you're going to shock people with, which they did. Um, is kind of a cool thing. And that's where like this whole craft beer revolution really formed out of this kind of experimentation and, and adding hops late into the boil and see what that did and using these Quebec strains. And you know, there's so many different things uh, that were born out of a homebrew technique that turned pro eventually. Yeah, that creativity running into great examples of, of beers that are, you know, trying to go after something, but nail it perfect with subtlety, right? You know, you run into those and those are, it's just amazing. And the, that's where, you know, I left that with just, yeah, invigorating towards creativity and wanting to experiment and things like that. Well, yeah, like take one guy there, and I've known him for years, Crispy Fry, and this is for you. He makes his Nearly Nirvana, which is a Sierra Nevada clone. And I think he said it was like, I'm probably butchering this, uh, batch 88. It might've been even higher than batch 88. Same recipe over and over and over again, 88 times as a home brewer. And I went back to that at least three times because it was so good. Yeah, speaking of booths I went back to, I want to give a shout out to the Cleveland Browns. That booth was amazing. You guys are making some awesome beer. I love that one. 
Um, while we're talking about homebrew con, I don't know if you know if I show this uh, or say this, but are, are you entering a wrestling match or something? Uh, well, we're not going to talk about that. That's Bruno. <laughs> so yes, I was challenged to a wrestling match next year in San Diego. And homebrew con's been at the same place in San Diego in the past. It's called the Town and Country. Apparently it's been remodeled, which it needed, but uh, it was awesome because they did homebrew night outside. Um, and it was just a killer party, great place. Hey, your family probably wants to go on vacation there anyway, so get two in one, get your family vacation and homebrew con at the same time. Yeah, worth mentioning too. I mean, they're always, San Diego is such a great beer city, so the evenings you get to go check out the local breweries, so it's just a great vacation, like you said, for the family and, and for us to enjoy local beer scene. One of the coolest parts about homebrew con is you rarely have to go far to have great beer. True. This week's kit of the week is a local Nate's Citrus Bomb. Yeah, so this is an amazing IPA that's featuring Citra, you know, hence the name. Uh, Nate Smith, let's talk about him for a minute. He's a uh, local home brewer, uh, former Doe's member, just all around amazing guy. Uh, he's called the Hop Whisperer for a good reason. He, he knows his hops and he knows them better than anybody. Um, this is a delicious beer that I, he's won awards with. Uh, it's one you're gonna wanna make. So to enter, go to morebeer.com forward slash free beer Friday and enter the weekly giveaway. So don't forget to enter the monthly giveaway. It's a year's worth of grain from Viking Malt. To enter, go to morebeer.com forward slash free beer Friday and enter that monthly giveaway. Thanks for watching. See you next Friday. Cheers. Cheers.